Rangers getting a lot of shine after two off seasons of a lot of big moves. Uh, we'll get the thoughts of CJ Nitkowski here on those moves and a number of the other changes here with Major League Baseball. CJ, of course, a former top 10 pick MLB pitcher, including for the Rangers. He is now the Texas Rangers lead TV color analyst with additional play-by-play games and co-host of Loud Outs on MLB Network Radio on Sirius XM. You can follow him on Twitter at CJ Nitkowski. CJ, how you doing? Bobby, RJ, I'm doing great, man. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. Uh, you know, I, I got to ask because I know it was an ongoing bit with our station when we were out there, they would, uh, they'd ask the guys in the clubhouse, like, Hey, what's, wh- what do you have to say to Jared Sandler? And, uh, they, 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 they would all, they would all just tee off on him. So, uh, I'm just curious, is there anything you want to pass on to Jared Sandler? Anything about how short he is? Um, yeah, his, 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 yeah. his temper being as short as his height. Uh, wow, like, again, they, two height jokes. Why I are you know. going for I, shoe I, size I, now? I, like I run out of them after a while, but, uh, CJ, anything you'd like to say to good old Jared Sandler? Yeah, tell him just to exhale and relax. He does a great job, man. We love him so much. He's fantastic. I'm, I feel grateful to have gotten to know him over these last now, I guess, going on year seven. Uh, he's so passionate about what he does, and uh, we have great conversations both on and off the air. And uh, we are very lucky to have him. And uh, you know, in a weird turn of events, certainly not what anybody was hoping for, but we're going to get to hear him some more on the radio with Eric taking a little bit of time. Uh, for himself as he gets healthy and so Ranger fans are lucky they're going to hear him a lot more this year absolutely he's very good he's he's very good he's just he's very short like we said uh <laughs> CJ uh what were your thoughts you know the the world baseball classic seemed to be a a huge success uh this time around I mean it's it's something that's been growing in popularity the last several times it's been done but it really seemed to take off this time um and and everybody got really invested in it it, it seemed to be more of a tv hit uh, than it has been at any other point. Uh, what were your general takeaways on, on the World Baseball Classic? And, and I guess specifically, I'm curious, your thoughts on how we had several of these players sustain injuries in it and, and that how you weigh that as an organization. Yeah, it's a difficult one. The Rangers were pretty fortunate that they only had a handful of players that participated and everybody got back and they were healthy. As far as the success of the WBC, I think a couple of things. One, we haven't had it in six years. You know, it was set up originally to be every three, but we haven't had one since 2017. And as somebody who was fortunate enough to experience some international baseball in Korea and Japan and the Dominican Republic, it's it, to me it's one of the greatest gifts to baseball fans, but even to baseball players too. Play with players from around the world, but then to bring that here in the WBC and our fans get to see how other fans watch the game. Right, you see these atmospheres that are going on that were in Miami, that were in Phoenix, when you get the Latin American countries, but then also the countries from Asia. It's a different kind of feel. I tell people all the time, just from playing overseas, it has a little bit more of an international soccer feel. And I think the excitement surrounding that, then you put on top of it pride of country for all of these countries. They want to be the ones standing there at the end. And we get a guy like Mike Trout, who's captain of Team USA, showing some pretty incredible emotion that we don't see from him all the time by playing for the Angels. And they've struggled to get to the postseason, so they haven't played that many meaningful games over the course of his career. And then that ending, it was so ridiculous. Like, you could not have come up with a better ending on paper. Rob Manford must have been beside himself watching Shohei Otani face Mike Trout to finish things off between Team Japan and Team USA. And, of course, he struck him out, so they did. And he ends up winning, and Team Japan ends up winning his third WBC in five years, but I, or the five that we've had. Um, but I think there's a real appetite for it. I asked Martin Perez yesterday. I said, man, if you had your choice of throwing a complete game shutout in the WBC final or game seven of the World Series, you know, which one would you take? And I know it's tough to compare, but I'm just kind of curious for a guy like him and all the pride from Team Venezuela that they have. He goes, man, I'll take five innings of one and four innings of the other. Like, he couldn't answer it. And I understand why he couldn't answer it, but that's how much it means to these guys. Um, it was great television. I think it's really good for the growth of the game, which we need very badly. Uh, the injuries are, are brutal. Jose Altuve is going to miss a couple of months. Edwin Diaz closing for the New York Mets is going to miss the whole year. It's awful. Nobody wants to see that, especially with Diaz getting hurt in a celebration. Um, so that part really stinks. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the risk that you take, and, and guys make decisions of whether or not they want to play. And, and we've seen enough of it. You can get hurt not playing in the WBC. Yeah, uh, we, we, we see that uh, all the time. Why do you think it seems like this had more interest than the one in 27. It just seems like this one was way more watched, consumed, attended. It's just because it's, you know, we're, we're further down the line. We've had five of them now. I guess it's a good question, man, because you're right. 
And you know, what was so special about this one compared to others? Perhaps it was more attention on it. Perhaps it was the fact that we have more stars coming from these countries. The fact that Chile Otani was playing in it, quite honestly, that Mike Trout was playing in it. Uh, we had a, we had tons of big guys. We didn't have maybe our best pitchers for Team USA. The top guys, obviously, Jacob to come here with the Rangers first year, of course, wants to go to a camp, doesn't want to uh, miss time. You know, Nader Baldi actually wanted to participate uh, in the WBC, but part of it is also insurance. Right? They're going to be insured not necessarily by the team, uh, but by the league in the WBC. I mean, in the case of Edwin Diaz, as an example, the Mets are not paying his salary this year. It's going to be Major League Baseball paying his nearly $20 million salary because he got hurt in the WBC. Um, so we didn't get the best of the best, but we just got some pretty good ones. So I think there was probably that uh, part of it as well, that Team USA lineup was absurd when you have Trey Turner batting ninth um, and a guy who mm. uh, ends up hitting five home runs in the tournament and setting a record. Uh, I think that had something to do with it. But, you know, it's, it's the country versus country stuff. And then the, kind of the upset that you get uh, in Puerto Rico making a run and seeing some of these smaller countries uh, trying to make it interesting. So I'd, I'm not sure if there was just one thing. I think the participation was a big part of it uh, and the media coverage was another. CJ Nikowski, Texas Rangers lead TV color analyst, talking with us here on Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. Uh, before we uh, jump into some specifics about the Rangers and, and what's coming up with them, uh, one more question here. You know, we saw the Aaron Judge home run race last year uh, brought a lot of positive attention to baseball. We're obviously sitting here talking about the World Baseball Classic. Uh, Forbes yesterday came out with the most valuable teams in 2023, and uh, MLB team values are up about 12% across the league. Um, you know, there's a lot of excitement about the Rangers with their acquisitions and things like that. Does it feel like to you, especially with some of the excitement about these rule changes too, does it feel to you like baseball, Major League Baseball is in a healthier place in terms of fan engagement and interest than it's been in, in a really long time? I think so, and I hope so because we need it, right? We had the COVID season, the short season of just 60 games. We had the CBA and the lockout. Uh, and getting things started late last year. And it's nice to put all of that behind us, have a really big season from a guy like Judge that here locally, what we're doing um, with the Rangers. It feels like this has been the biggest season. I mean, this is year maybe 11 for me, I believe, uh, you know, working in media. Uh, this does feel like it's the biggest one now. I think also the local tie-in uh, with the Rangers has something to do with that as well. But I would agree. I feel like 2023 is the season that we have been waiting for. Uh, more teams engaged, I think, as well. Right? You talk about some of the rule changes that we're going to see on the field, but also with that new CBA. And there's still going to be teams that are, you know, not trying. Essentially, I don't necessarily mm-hmm. with tanking, but not putting the resources behind their club. But I think we're seeing less of that. Uh, we're doing a pretty good job. Baseball hasn't been great about marketing their stars, but I think we're doing a better job of that. And there's a lot of really good young ones. I think that's part of it as well. Guys like Julio Rodriguez and others that we're seeing start to emerge and become stars and show some personality, add to the excitement. Of what's going on with our game as well. So you know, everything, everything, most of the things have been relatively positive. And so, yeah, I'm with you. I think there's something special about this season. It feels like everything's going in the right direction. And if these rules play out the way that they hope that they do, we should have a more entertaining product. Uh, one specific rule, the pitch clock. Is this something you're in favor of? And 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 do you like the tweaks? You know, because they, they, they made the kind of the, the, the rule the other day where if, if pitchers cover them first, you, gotta, you don't start the next batter clock until – you know, he's back closer to the mound. Do you, what, what's your take on all this? Yeah, so I do like them so far. I was a little bit concerned. I know that some of the guys necessarily didn't love them, but we know that they'll get used to them because they're not going to uh, go away. Our first game that we had was on Monday on television, an hour and 54 minutes for a 2 nothing game. Wow. I mean, that's absurd. You're talking about, you know, the Rangers a year ago in spring were averaging, I believe it was three hours and 11 minutes per game. That's about the game time during the regular season. Now, we're not going to see sub-two-hour games, you know, maybe one or two over the course of the year. But just the idea if we can even trim this thing down, and it's not just about game time, but if we can trim it down to, you know, 240, 245 even on the high end, it's more about the pace and the action. And last year we went nearly four minutes in between batter balls getting put in play. It's too slow. I mean, you guys watch it. I love the game. I watch it too, and there's times where I'm like, my goodness, we got to pick this up. And so I think forcing these guys to do that has been really good. Something that I, I'm hoping that they will tweak that I don't think they will. You know, they told us, I, I watched multiple presentations before we got to spring training about the rules and how they're going to play and making sure the broadcasters understood everything. And they said, listen, there's going to be a game that ends on a pitch clock violation. And we saw it early in spring training, and it's awful. Like That, to me, can't happen, especially if it's an important game. I mean, can you imagine the Rangers having a shot to get to the postseason and Dolores Garcia 
gets called out with a tied run on second base and the game's over uh, mm-hmm. because he didn't get back in the box in time. Like that, that should not happen. I'd love to see it go away in the ninth inning. Uh, I was using the example of what we saw at the very end of the WBC. They weren't playing in, under those rules. But the last two pitches when Shohei Otani struck out Mike Trout, there were 30 seconds in between each. The rule's 15. Right? And, but nobody would care because those are huge moments and you're wrapped up in that moment. And when you're watching on television, directors and producers and cameramen do such a great job of giving us the shots that bring those moments to life. Uh, I, I, we don't need it in the ninth inning. I just, I, it's not going to change, and I probably just need to let it go. Um, but I'd like to see it go away in the ninth inning. Other than that, it's been great. The pace has been really good, um, and I think fans are going to enjoy it. Obviously, last season, a lot of uh, money, a lot of capital invested for the Rangers in you know the middle infield and and you know trying to beef up the lineup. This year, a a focus on the pitching, uh, the rotation specifically. And I mean, it's it's obviously just spring training, but it's still pretty exciting you look at the you know you just go ahead and look at the the line scores from spring training and mm-hmm. when you see john gray nathan Avaldi, uh jacob de Gram, and it's like well they've combined for 27 innings and given up zero earned runs and struck out 24 walked for uh it, it makes you feel good about the rotation uh your general thoughts about the rotation and, and i guess specifically one thing that i'm excited about is what looks like a a return to the normal velocity for Evaldi, who uh, it looks like has been hit like 99 after he had taken a dip the last couple of years. Yeah, he finished the season healthy. Jacob DeGrom finished the season healthy. I think that is what we're seeing kind of carry over. So, yeah, we got some big numbers for these guys. Either one of those guys could pitch at the top of the rotation. Uh, it is really nice right now. This is something we've been waiting uh, for a while. And if Jacob or is he's hurt right now, he's dealing with some shoulder fatigue, but that's a six starter, an established big league starter who would be in the sixth spot right now. So the Rangers have depth. Uh, they also have depth from some of the younger pitchers that we saw uh, last year that will be ready to go if a need arises during the year. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, but this is a playoff caliber rotation. You know, a healthy Jacob DeGrom is the best in the game, and we'll actually have him on Saturday tomorrow. Uh, that's our last television game here from Arizona. He's starting that game. So if you want to get your first look at, at Jacob DeGrom, that'll be tomorrow afternoon on uh, Valley Sports Southwest. So it's exciting, man. This guy's so legit. Uh, but it's the depth. And so perhaps maybe it's some closer games, a little more pressure uh, on the offense, and it's a good offense, uh, but a little bit more pressure maybe on the bullpen as well here early on. But this is probably as good of a rotation as we have seen, at least on paper, assuming that Martin can kind of repeat what he did a year ago. I mean, he was incredible. A healthy John Gray, he, you know, he might be the sleeper, quite honestly, mm-hmm. uh, in this rotation, him and Andrew Heaney, because we're talking about everybody else. Heaney did a really nice job uh, with the Dodgers and kind of made some adjustments to his repertoire. So there's a lot to be excited about. This is legit. I know sometimes... We get a little bit overexcited looking for optimism or looking for the reasons to be optimistic. They make it very easy with what's going on in this rotation this year. So it's safe to say that you disagree that ESPN and ranked Jake DeGrom as like the 16th best pitcher in baseball. <laughs> is that what they put him? Yes. Ranking for, you know, they, they, we all do it, right? I do it in radio. You guys do it, I'm sure. You get people worked up a little bit. It creates phone calls and uh, it creates comments and hits and everything else. Listen, when healthy, he's right there. He's one or two. Um, in the game. I don't be 35 years old this year. And you really, and again, Ranger fans will get a good look at him. Those four pitches, but it's essentially two. I mean, it's fastball slider. Uh, he's been a triple digit, and he does it so free and easy. And there's so much carry uh, on that fastball. And you'll see it. He just dominates away to right. He's into lefties, and he makes it look so easy. Um, so, no, I would not agree with the fact that if someone even put him it, it were double digits when it came to ranking Jacob DeGrom. Texas Rangers lead TV color analyst, CJ Nitkowski, also the co-host of Loud Outs on MLB Network Radio on Sirius XM. You can follow him on Twitter at CJ Nitkowski. CJ, thank you so much, and uh, give Sandler some noogies for us. Oh, he left already, so I'm going to have to wait till I see him. Yeah, he left early. I can't come I've been here for four days, but he's put in some work here, so uh, he probably deserves a little rest. But just, now I look forward to uh, seeing him, and, uh, man, look forward to the year. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it, CJ. 